this would be our final trip to Falls Creek for the season. It has been unusually warm throughout the whole season in Australia, leading to significant challenges for the snowpack. Fortunately, the grooming team at Falls Creek are incredibly skilled and managed to keep most of the lakeside terrain accessible. To make the most of our last visit, we decided to boost our confidence and explore the terrain park. While we are more than comfortable tackling expert runs in Canada and North America, the terrain park presents a whole new challenge. Additionally, we decided to give skiing another try, and to our surprise, we actually found it to be really enjoyable. Engaging in both of these activities, we were well aware that falling was a likely occurrence, and nobody likes to take a tumble. Our primary concern when entering the terrain park was the prospect of falling and potentially getting hurt. Unlike the figure being snow, they're metal poles to contend with, making the risk more obvious. This is where Ripple Impact Gear played a crucial role. It provided us with a sense of assurance that if we did happen to fall, we'd taken the proactive steps to safeguard ourselves. With this newfound confidence, it encouraged us to challenge ourselves in both the terrain park and while skiing. We had acquired a set of the Ripple Impact Gear, which included a set of impact shorts, knee pads, and wrist guards. After placing the order, it took approximately 10 days for the shipment to arrive. Since we find ourselves visiting snowy destinations every few weeks, the timing worked out perfectly, and the gear arrived just before our next trip. The impact shorts provide all-round protection and are particularly helpful when falling sideways. Initially, you can feel them when you put them on, However, within an hour, they become practically unnoticeable. They also added an extra layer of comfort when sitting on a cold, hard chairlift, which doesn't come with any padding. The knee pads are easy to slide on and don't hinder your ability to bend your knees. They prove beneficial when taking a tumble while snowboarding, although it's important to note that these are designed exclusively for snow sports and aren't suitable for summer activities like skateboarding. Lastly, the wrist guards were a game changer. Many times in the past, we've left the mountain with sore wrists, especially when learning to ride, and you put your wrist forward when falling. These wrist guards are comfortable and easy slide under your gloves. While they might make using a mobile phone a bit awkward, that's a minor inconvenience compared to the wrist protection they offer. To start our day, we decided to warm up with a few runs through the spring slush at the Ruin Castle one of our preferred areas of Falls Creek. Without hesitation, we headed to the small bowls beneath the chairlift, but the spring bumps quickly caught us off guard, catching an edge, and of course, taking our first tumble of the weekend. Fortunately, we were wearing the Ripple Impact shorts, which has made it easy to brush off this fall and keep going. On our second attempt, armed with the knowledge of the snow conditions, we were better prepared to anticipate the turns. Next, we headed over to the groom slopes, for some enjoyable spring skiing and practice executing backside and frontside 180s. While these tricks are relatively straightforward, they've become a timeless classic. When performed right, they can hold their style, even against the most challenging triples, which admittedly are beyond our skill level. Once you've mastered these tricks, they add an element of excitement to your riding all over the resort, especially when you can smoothly link turn after turn with frontside and backside 180s in between. On the second day of our trip, we decided it was time to venture out to the actual terrain park. In the morning, they had only opened a small path, which is the ideal place to start. Equipped with our full Ripple Impact Kit, we chose to begin with the boxes and the rails, and they are well designed triple feature set up, gradually increasing in difficulty. The first box was wide and flat, providing a great opportunity to get accustomed riding it. The second box was a bit more narrow, and then the third feature, a long thin rail. On our second attempt, feeling more comfortable and confident, we decided to extend our back foot slightly and shift into a bit of a board slide. 
successfully navigating the first two features without any mishaps boosted our confidence to take on the large, thinner rail. Surprisingly, we managed to make it all the way nearly to the end. Laps three and four were marked by growing confidence as we pushed our board slides further, plus managed to reach the very end of the rail, which was a pleasant surprise. It seemed that it might not be as challenging as we initially thought. Afterward, it was time to return to the base and switch from snowboarding to skiing, but not before taking one final lap through the mini park, specifically the jump line. We couldn't resist performing a quick indie grab on both jumps. A timeless trick that always adds a touch of fun. Now it was time to give skiing another shot. This was only our second time on skis and we were fully prepared for the inevitable falls. Having the ripple impact shorts was our secret weapon for protection. Skiing offered a completely different experience compared to snowboarding in many, many ways, but we were optimistic that by the end of the afternoon, we would successfully navigate a medium level blue run. One significant difference was the newfound freedom or disconnection of our feet. Unlike snowboarding, where both your feet are connected to the same board, skiing required us to control each foot independently. It took some time to wrap our heads around this concept while simultaneously working on mastering the art of turning and, well, stopping. After a few warm-up runs, we found ourselves back at Ruined Castle. Although the blue runs here posed a bit more of a challenge, they offered the advantage of fewer crowds. We believed that the relative solitude would make it easier for us to hone our newly acquired skills without the constant rush of people zipping past. As we took lap after lap on the chairlift, we held on to the belief that sooner or later, we would successfully navigate the entire run, seamlessly linking our turns and ideally avoiding any tumbles. It took us approximately four to five laps of the same run to reach this modest goal and we'd already had tumble after tumble. Thankfully, nothing too sore due to the soft snow and our ripple impact shorts. By our last lap, our legs were burning and our feet were feeling the strain from these new foot bindings. However, we were stoked to have achieved our objective and confidently tackled a blue run on skis, all on just our second day of skiing. As 3pm approached, it seemed to arrive faster than we had anticipated. The reality of facing a four hour drive back home sadly marked the end of our skiing adventure and the farewell to the Australian winter season of 2023. It almost feels like the memories of a lacklustre season have become a distant echo, especially considering the exceptional seasons we've enjoyed in recent years. Nevertheless, it's a timely reminder that not every season guarantees meters after meters of snowfall. And we must remember that we live in Australia, a place that is not particularly renowned globally for its winters or its abundant snowfall. Until next time, Australian snow, we'll be seeing you again soon. Better yet, it's time to start planning our ski trips for the northern winter of 23-24.